Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. And today, uh, we're going to talk about what I think is the coolest artifact that Battleship Missouri has. Now, they might have some other cool stuff around the ship, but this one is special to me because New Jersey doesn't have one. I've been trying to get one, but I haven't been able to get it. This is an RPV Pioneer drone. Iowa-class battleships would carry several of these, uh, as many as uh, seven, in a pair of Connex boxes that were tied down to the aviation tie-down points on the fantail of the ship under the barrels of Turret 3. These were part of a modification package in the mid to late 80s that the Iowas got. It was first tested on Iowa, and it's eventually put on uh, all four ships, and a squadron of these was formed in both the Atlantic and the Pacific, and whichever uh, of the four battleships was operable at that time in that ocean would get a detachment from that squadron. Uh, so Missouri and New Jersey in the Pacific would rotate the detachment. I, I suspect they just picked the whole Connex box up and, and the uh, crew associated with them and dropped it on the next ship. They sat side by side at the pier at Long Beach. And likewise in the Atlantic, uh, Iowa and Wisconsin did. These Pioneer drones replaced the old float planes of World War II. The battleship's guns can fire further than their sensors can detect. And so, by putting an aircraft over the horizon, you can spot the fall of shot on enemy targets and adjust your fire accordingly. In theory, this was originally done for naval warfare. That's what the float planes were primarily for. However, in practice, the Iowa-class battleships use these primarily for shore uh, bombardment. You can see the downward-looking uh, camera in the black dome there. Another fun feature is this has a pusher propeller on it. This is made out of wood so that uh, when it is recovered, it's okay if that breaks and it's not going to do significant damage. Uh, and it does break frequently. Recovery is done with basically a huge volleyball net that is on the fantail of the ship. The pilot comes out of the drone control room and uh, stands back near the helicopter uh, control point with a joystick and uses that to crash this thing nose first into the volleyball net. It comes in several pieces, which makes it easier to take in and out of the Connex box that serves as the hangar. While many cruisers have hangars, Iowa-class battleships, and uh, no American battleship I can think of uh, ever did have a hangar. So the wing uh, sort of comes off the top, and you can store those. Uh, the body of it can be stored. It's relatively light. It's basically only got a lawnmower engine on it, uh, and it operates at a high enough altitude that it's a small thing. You can't really see it or hear it too well. Iowa-class battleships do not have a runway to launch these, they are rocket-assisted takeoff, which means basically you strap a small rocket to the bottom of it, and uh, it sits on a little launch stand and just shoots into the air where the uh, lawnmower engine can take over. Uh, these rockets are stored at the base of the conning tower on the O1 level in what's known as the Rado magazine. Uh, this was an old 40 millimeter clipping room, so it was already set up as a magazine space. Uh, and that was the closest such space that they could find to put these in. Uh, there's a link in the description below to a video we've done in New Jersey's Rado magazine. As far as I can tell, there's no evidence on New Jersey of where the drone recovery net, quote unquote, the volleyball net, was mounted. We know she carried them, but we don't see the net. Um, we have seen evidence of multiple types of nets used on Iowa-class battleships, there were probably multiple types of mounting points. But here in Missouri, we found uh, the first evidence I've ever seen of how the net worked. So there is this bracket here, which you can tell is a newer steel, uh, probably installed 88, 89 time frame, that uh, is where the king post would have been installed. There's one on each side. They ripped up the wood, put in a metal plate, uh, bolted this bracket down, and then welded it in place. Uh, but you don't want that thing permanently erected. So it's on a hinge. You can see the pinhole there allows it to hinge up and down. It has two legs for support. 
the most important leg is the one that comes diagonal to this track right here. When this lays down, the leg that would be in this track slides out down the track forward. When you're ready to erect the net, your aviation detachment pushes this leg forward like Iwo Jima. That erects the king post, and then when it gets to the end here, you can pin it in place. Once that is done, you've got front to back stability, but no side to side. This square post here with the pinhole is where a bracket would come from the side to attach. And the net would be strung all the way across the fantail here to another set of posts on the other side. And the identical equipment is over there. Uh, so this is a real simple modification, uh, a real simple, uh, like stupid simple, solution to recovering an aircraft on a ship that doesn't have a, a traditional uh, runway flight deck type thing for uh, non-vertical takeoff aviation assets. Uh, I would love to meet the engineer who's like, hey, what if we just crash it into a volleyball net? And everybody says, yeah, let's go for that. Associated with the drones are a pair of antennas which are used to control them in flight. These were retrofitted mid 80s to the Iowa class battleships. And when the Navy retrofits antennas onto the ship, they have to make sure they're not gonna to get too much interference. So for the Iowa class battleships and a number of other ship classes, the Navy makes uh, 148 scale brass models. These can then be sat on a turntable that's 22 feet wide. So you can turn it and give it several different profiles to basically a uh, radar emitter and then it's sitting on uh, basically a, a bowl made out of lead that's going to reflect signals similarly to the water so as you're bouncing these signals off of the ship you can tell which antennas are going to interfere with each other and all of that so the drone control antennas this forward one on the 09 level of the superstructure that looks like a big round dish and its mate located just forward of the funnel back here. Those are added uh, probably 87, 88 time period. This model is definitely Missouri. It shows the 011 level that all of the Iowas except New Jersey received in the 80s. It's got all of the 80s upgrades from the drone stuff all the way down to chaff launchers, harpoons and tomahawks and phalanxes. And the bow of it does not have the old 20 millimeter gun tub. New Jersey and Missouri lost their gun tubs, but Iowa and Wisconsin retained them. So this model is definitely Missouri, and it's a fitting tribute that it is on display here with that ship. So the radar antennas. There is one located forward, like I said, because the superstructure blocks uh, the signals from the main antenna mounted on top of the funnel that otherwise has a pretty good field of vision. The Navy also found that uh, this could be blocked on landing just by the ship as it's looking down. So they mounted an additional antenna, which does not appear on this model, on top of the old film projection booth back here just after turret three. And like we were saying earlier, under turret three, uh, dead center, one forward and one aft would be two connex boxes right up against each other tied down. So, Hi. tests on these antennas proved that uh, they didn't interfere with each other, found the different interferences so that they could be placed in the most ideal situation. And yep. now looking up, we can see them in place on Missouri. Note that they are not those dish-shaped antennas like we saw, they are round domes. What's the deal with that? The fiberglass dome is protecting the actual uh, transmitter antenna up there. So the Navy installs this system only on the Iowa-class battleships as far as I know. Uh, so they don't make special antenna domes for those. However, Pascagoula, Mississippi, which does the work on Iowa and Wisconsin, has at least seven SPQ-9 fire control radar domes laying around. So they're able to take those domes and put them over the radar antennas on the Iowas. 
Iowa, Wisconsin, and Missouri each got two domes, one forward, one aft. With, uh, New Jersey only gets one dome. Because her forward superstructure is different from her sister ships, she never gets the forward radar antenna. Uh, maybe she would have gotten a modification if the Iowa-class battleships had stayed in service longer, um, but as far as we know, she only carries the drones during her 8990 uh, deployment to the Persian Gulf. And after that, they, they uh, take her out of service and they never modify her to have that forward-looking dome. This has led uh, a number of armchair historians who are not as familiar with the ships as the people who actually have them to look at these and say, SPQ-9 radar dome, that means that the fire control system of Iowa-class battleships are modified in the 1980s. That's not true. They never got a digital fire control. Come on any of the battleships and you'll see the old analog computers and no modern digital fire control computers replacing them. Because it is the SPQ-9 fire control radar uh, from Spruance-class destroyers and Ticonderoga-class cruisers, people assume that the Iowa's got that radar. And they have further evidence because the Navy is looking at updating them for that radar as they also develop extended range munitions for the 16-inch guns. As it turns out, those munitions are never developed and the radar uh, upgrades are never installed because the ships are taken out of service by 1992. Had they been retained longer into the Bush administration post-Gulf War, they would have likely received those modifications. All of the original drone control radars and domes were removed. Missouri was able to make a pair of domes to retain their original silhouette, and I'm so jealous of that because New Jersey's platform on the funnel is empty, and it's probably a $10,000 project to make a fiberglass dome uh, to, to uh, put up there, and then even more money to get a crane to haul it into place. So the museum has not yet done that. That is the most striking exterior feature of the ship that one can look at the ship silhouette and say, oh, that's missing, uh, which is upsetting for me because New Jersey is otherwise largely complete. Just pointing out that this is not the first time that drones are used in a naval setting or on Iowa-class battleships, uh, and be sure to check the link in the video description down below to see some other instances of drones being used, uh, particularly on Iowa-class battleships. Do you think the drones were a worthy modification to the ships, or do you think they were a technology that had not yet come into its own? Let us know in the comment section down below. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State, also from a number of other businesses and private individuals like yourselves. We really appreciate your support. Consider supporting Battleship Missouri, located here in Pearl Harbor, Hawaii. Linked below is the description to their donate page and also their social media so you can follow them and see what work they're doing, such as restoring the drone domes and other things. You can support Battleship New Jersey by liking, sharing, and subscribing so more people find out about us and our channel. Thanks for watching.